do have to share, um, have not had to dress or put a tie on in a long time. I don't want to tell you how many times it took me to get my tie right, so hopefully that's not an indication of how the report's going to go this morning. As it has been our custom, the annual report begins with our brief but nevertheless changing mission statement. This is set out from our CLC Constitution Article 2. Although I encourage you to read the report thoroughly, I will keep it brief this morning to touch on the highlights of the amazing things you all as members along with Pastor Rowald and the staff do for our congregation within our church, throughout our community, and across the globe. We begin with Section 1, We Come and We Go, prepared by Pastor Rowald. Amidst our current situation, church membership continues to sustain at a healthy 503 baptized members, of which 431 were confirmed, overall up four from last year. Baptisms increased from four to six since 2019. There were 1,401 communions, or what equates to 40% of prior year, prominently driven by in-person service cancellations. And noteworthy are the 268 served outside, thanks to Pastor Rollwald adapting in a safe manner to meet the current in-person and use of technology needs with the diligent support from the Wellness and Safety Committee. On the topic of social welfare, led by Dottie Darrell, we continue to provide goods and services to a variety of faith-based organizations via our Works of Mercy. 3,679 pounds of food to the Cheshire Food, food Pantry, along with $920 donated, 750 of which came from Thriving Feed Funds. Several baby items were donated to the Hope Pregnancy Center here in Cheshire. 55 hygiene kits and $150 to the Orphan Grain Train. 615 donated to the Church World Service to provide blankets to those globally in need. And of course, we did not forget our troops that helped serve and protect our country, providing comfort items and $315 to them in Afghanistan. 428 was collected at Thanksgiving and will be targeted to AmeriCares, an emergency response and health organization providing supplies, things like PPE and other medical items to frontline workers. Regarding our ministry offerings, there are well over a dozen organizations we provide support, support to through collections and projects both locally and worldwide. Sharing this part of the annual report certainly makes me smile and warms my heart, hopefully for you all as well. We thank Dottie as she wraps up her term, and we welcome Vicki DePaulo as the social welfare deacon. Moving on to sharing Christ with others, led by Alan Spose. Although we simply were not able to organize and attend our traditional activities, there is a plan in place when the situ with situation changes for things to reopen as best we can. On a positive note, we were awarded a $500 grant from the Lutheran Church Extension Fund for Outreach Ministry. And stay tuned for more on the materials purchased as we move forward with this exciting opportunity in 2021. The evangelism team also partnered with the social welfare team to participate in the Cheshire Lights of Hope program, a nonprofit in town that gives back tens of thousands to our community aimed at helping neighbors, helping neighbors. We thank Alan as he wraps up his term and welcome Marilyn Miller as evangelism deacon this year. Regarding keeping our house in order, particularly managed by Terry Daly, currently we have 56 active voting members, which is a continued indicator of sustainability within our congregation. As a reminder, voting membership is open to all CLC communicant members 18 years of age and older, and I encourage those who are not active voters to consider becoming one to assist in the guidance, growth, and mission of our congregation. Building and property led by Andy Clark. This is never an easy topic to summarize. With all that takes place, Andy, to maintain the church and parsonage and keep them looking really steppy. I know the church sign was installed in 2019, but it still catches my eye every time I drive by, and the temporary event signs added thanks to Don Druff's assistance continue to augment our street awareness. I'm happy to report that it did not go unnoticed as we notably received a Town Beautification Award for our sign and planting. Although accomplished in a mini, safe, cleaning fashion, our grounds consistently look great and organized. 
Thanks to all those who joined us for cleanup, especially Randy Raditz, who spearheads the mulching effort in and around the column bar. Our choir loft stairway was sanded and refinished, and our parking lot was freshened up with new lines and cracks being filled, thanks to Ed Schweitzer for arranging that. In June, there was rot repaired on the bell, and in September, a bunch of folks organized to complete the painting on the outside of the church. For those attending church in person today or stopping by this week, you may have noticed the east side of the roof is nearing completion of replacement. Look for pictures on our website shortly of how beautiful it looks. We understand it was a challenging decision by the voters to make between replacing the cedar shakes versus um, switching to asphalt, considering the cost and sustained architectural design. Our cleaning team, Hector and Jeanette, informed us they were retiring at the end of December and Andy is actively working to uh, replace them. We certainly are sorry to see them go. They did such a great job for us for years. We're happy to report that the church use by a couple of, Lord, of local organizations went well. The council believes this is a great vehicle to drive up evangelism awareness in the community of what we have to offer here at CLC. So please consider the potential for extending use to other appropriate organizations you become aware of in your travels. We have a form and a process that we follow for this so the group understands what we expect from them to use it. On behalf of Andy, I'd like to thank the countless men and women and youth volunteers, as he refers to them as our unsung church mice, who help keep the church and the parsonage maintained and beautiful, not only in our eyes, but hopefully in God's eyes too. At the core, Christian education, led in the interim by Judy DiDomenzio until Craig Wilson came on board and took the lead, is a vital part of the ministry of the church for all ages. Pastor Rowall consistently leads two Bible studies each week via Zoom and socially distanced in person, and we encourage anyone not attending to consider it, regardless of your prior exposure to Bible study. An area we continue to focus on is Sunday school. Classes for children aged four through youth in junior high school are offered remotely via Zoom on the second and fourth Sundays during the education hour. And we look forward to resuming in person when conditions allow us to. We have 19 enrolled children and 20 high school students. We hope to get more involved. We want to extend a thank you to all the Sunday school teachers who volunteer their time to allow our program to be successful. A special thank you to Judy DiDomizio for her uncompromising service and contribution to the gold standard mission we have. And notably, a special thank you to Carly Myers, our outgoing Sunday school superintendent for her multiple years of faithful service to our children. Led by advisor Kristen Donawal, Little Cherub's Christian Preschool continues to hold its own. Directed by Joanne Holstein and supported by teachers Cindy Barker and the late Martha Henderson. There are nine children enrolled in the three to four year old programs, down from 24 prior to the pandemic. The curriculum is, continues to be Christ-centered and focuses on enabling the children to grow in their relationship with God and one another. Pastor Rowall gets to spend some weekly time with them as their teacher and friend, incorporating prayer and worship as a prominent part of their day of fun and learning. We've been fortunate to continue offering this program with funding assistance from the federal government Paycheck Protection Loan Program, otherwise known as the PPP. In regard to Martha's birthing passing, she was a staple here at CLC, and the preschool children and parents simply loved her. She will certainly be missed, but never forgotten. As the team mourns her passing, they are also working on a path forward to provide a strong and sustaining program. We thank Craig Wilson for stepping in as interim deacon and officially starting his three-year education term for 2021. And we welcome Lisa Muller as youth deacon, who will partner with pastor and parents to focus on our youth ministry. Moving on to our offerings. Led by Karen Smith, financial statements, council, and voters minutes are made regularly available after each meeting. Our 2020 end of year Financial statements are attached to the end of the annual report. Total income was 350,000, 47,000 above the planned amount, and 45,000 over last year. Total expenses were 311,000, 
4,000 below the planned amount, primarily driven by the church being closed for several months for services that we just uh, didn't need at the time. Some of them we still don't need. The 39,000 from the Paycheck Protection Program was officially forgiven in late December, great news, turning that liability to an income asset and a special thank you to Vicki DePaula for leading that loan effort. 48,600 was taken from the capital fund for the roof replacement project. And most importantly, we were able to meet all of our obligations to our worldwide ministries and transfer the full 31,000 budgeted to our capital fund. If you exclude the 39,000, at the end of year, we were at 92.3% of our mission plan due to offerings, which um, I think we would say was a, a pretty good success considering uh, last year. Although Karen Smith kept us on track monthly, a huge thank you to Nancy Schweitzer for all her meticulous accounting work and Vicki DiPaolo for chairing the financial committee that developed our mission plan. We thank Karen as she wraps up her term, and we welcome Bill Sherman as treasurer. We thank Vicki as she wraps up her term, and we welcome Bill Solier as vice president. As we are all aware, 2020 offered limited opportunities to formally gather for Christian fellowship. With vaccines being diligently distributed as we speak, there is hope we can return to our normal schedule of activities and events at some point this year. We thank Karen as she wraps up her term, and we welcome Pam Clark as fellowship deacon. On the topic of worship, there is positive news that our two Sunday service average in-person attendance was 122 pre-COVID and only 43 during COVID, obviously due to limitations. However, these numbers are a little bit hard for us to um, uh, summarize they you know being lower than last year if you add in the remote live attendance via zoom that ranged anywhere from 20 to 35 families because there's multiple people potentially watching and if you look at the number of live streams that were watched thereafter by our congregation or potentially folks outside of our congregation there's clearly a trend with the investment um, of that ongoing uh, service, service as well Amongst the other content published regularly by Bill Jewell on our CLC website, you can find many of Pastor Rollwald and Pastor Nectaline's Sunday sermons and music from our choir within our blog section. I'd like to extend a thank you to all the ushers, Altar Guild, Acolytes, Readers, Altar Assistants, Choir, and others who serve to make all this possible each and every week. It certainly takes a village. Our prominent women's group, led by Karen Whelan, were only able to organize limited activities this year as well. Their efforts produced charitable donations that totaled $2,300, and as you'll see in the report, have been distributed to several, several noteworthy organizations. Regarding our offerings, our financial secretary reports led by Guy Mason are prepared monthly and presented at council and voters' meetings few noteworthy items to mention that minimize human error and make the bank teller process run smoothly or as follows. Please use your pledge envelopes and mark on the outside the amount enclosed. Please do not post date checks and only use black or blue ink. One other item Guy points out is if you, if you by chance, you know, haven't been at church for a while and using your envelopes, there's no need to use them individually. Just use your most recent one to, um, to provide your offerings. It just simplifies the process. And Guy would also like to um, open any new volunteers to assist with the weekly offering counting. He would like to thank all of the team who have assisted. Great. Moving on to time and talents. Led by Rob DeLabelle, pledge cards were sent out in November for 2021, and we encourage you, if you have not already, to send in your pledges. Prior to being on council, I never pledged, and it, it was very apparent to me the need to be able to pledge, to be able to effectively um, develop and stay on track to meet our mission plan and, and the obligations that we have for our worldwide ministries. Currently, we have received 61, includes five new pledgers, but we're down six from last year. The 61 comprises 73, the 61%, 61, 61, I'm sorry, and the amount pledged comprises 73% of our mission plan. So we do have a little bit of ground to make up. 
in support of large capital projects and other things that we uh, need to do to be able to keep our ongoing needs. So again, I'd ask you to consider if you haven't pledged. We received great responses to the time and talent cards that went out with the pledge and the individual interests have been shared with the appropriate leaders. So expect to uh, hear from them as they reach out soon. Regards to wellness and safety. This was co-chaired by Pastor Rowald and Pat DiDomizio. It continues to stay abreast of evolving changes and provide direction to all that we do to keep CLC safe. Committees comprised of multiple experts. They focus on discussing, developing, implementing, and revising a wide variety of needs aimed at the safety and well-being of our congregation and staff. A few highlights include continuous preparedness and procedures in the event of medical, security, or fire emergencies, purchasing of first aid, medical supplies, hand sanitizers, protective equipment, training, obviously things that all support socially distanced Sunday service attendance, and two, uh, two that I'd like to call out the and the outdoor confirmation and the 60-year celebration events that occurred in October all influenced by the Wellness and Safety Committee. We thank Pat for his leadership and contributions in 2020, as Pastor takes the lead to share that in 2021. Christian Growth Fund, led by Alan Santoro, allows us to receive contributions and gifts and use them for the ongoing ministry in accordance with our mission statement and bylaw. No due deposits occurred. One withdrawal of 5,000 to the NED and as you'll note, there were 28,000 in earnings on the funds with a balance increase of 9% at the end of the year to 268,000. As a reminder, all members are welcome and encouraged to contribute to these funds as, as part of an estate plan or bequeath a gift under a will of trust and commitment. Additionally, you can submit ideas on how we can use these funds for projects or special needs. We thank Alan as he wraps up his term and we welcome David Trump as Christian Growth Fund begins in 2021. Looking ahead, we begin a new year in hopes that we can get back to a level of normalcy at some point. While our voters assembly decide on our mission plan and the church council regular, regularly monitors our progress towards the plan each year, we continue to assess ourselves against the six part ministry plan that Pastor Rowalt set out for us in 2019. And we'd like to continue extending these goals and objectives into 2021. Increase overall worship attendance by 10%, increase Sunday school attendance by 10%, increase overall Bible study attendance by 10%, increase young family engagement and participation, continue reviving our youth group efforts and strengthen our outreach and evangelism activities. And we all know the speed bumps that were put in, put in front of us last year um, in order to achieve any level of increase, but um, certainly we want to continue gauging ourselves and uh, striving to do great things. As I mentioned, and we think we're all familiar, I tried not to use the word pandemic too much in the report. 2020 was certainly a challenging year. It also stretched us to adjust, make strides, and create opportunities where feasible. We cannot thank Pastor and his wife, Tricia, Carol Santoro, and Martha Henderson, I'm sorry, Martha Medford, enough for what they graciously do day in and day out. Although they cannot do it alone, we must continue to offer our time and talents as members of this congregation, regardless of how small the individual or group contribution. With God's grace, we are an amazing and unstoppable team and can make a noticeable difference in our communities and across the globe. To conclude, if you have any questions about anything in the report or have ideas or suggestions, please contact any of the respective officers, deacons, pastor, or myself. My contact info is included in the bottom of all of the Heavenly Herald articles. And thank you all for remaining and listening. God bless and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Our annual meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.